Morning, folks. Oh, crap, I never get any coffee. Morning. See me all right? Hear me all right? Honor Stuart, Bill, Mark, Anne, Paul. Lorraine, Margaret, Barbara, Ian. Morning, Gordon. Morning, Pete, Maxwell, Ian. Ruth, Lorraine, Diane, Eddie. Hi, good morning, Gordon. Morning, Dory. Harry. Numbers are climbing steadily, folks. Once we get to 50, we'll get cracked on. Okay. Morning, John, Mark, Ted. Morning, Morag. Lenny, Ruth. Gary, Lindsay, Laurie. Morning, John. Morning, Stuart. Mandy. Adele. Margaret. Morning, Jim. Donna, right, that's us up there at 50 mark, folks. Let's get going. We'll start the day, as always, with a coronavirus update. And then we'll move on. Okay. So let's get this show on the road. Coronavirus update. These are the figures for yesterday, the 18th of the 8th, 2020. Tested in Scotland. These are the NHS tests. There are other tests that takes the figure up to nearly 700,000. Um, or over 700,000, but I'm only reporting on NHS figures here, okay? So, tested in the NHS Scotland, 432,849, and that's plus 4,721 from yesterday to today, uh, from Monday to Tuesday, okay? Tested positive, 19,407, and that's plus 49. So, cases are still going up and down like a yo-yo here, all right? In hospital, 254, and that's plus 6 from uh, Monday to Tuesday, right? Deaths, I'm very pleased to report that, uh, once again, there have been no additional COVID deaths in Scotland um, and hospitals. Uh, but community, um, uh, community and hospital deaths combined will be updated by the National Records for Scotland today and the First Minister's briefing, so we'll listen out for that. Hopefully the number shrunk. It was five last week. Let's hope it's done. All right, but community and hospital deaths combined as of yesterday was 4,213. A bloody big number and a sore one, right? But it's been pretty well stable for a good while now. All right, um, the figures of people dying for this terrible virus are going down all the time. And it would appear that the, the, most of these new cases are younger folk who are no suffering as badly, all right? Right, well, let's move on to the review of yesterday's news. Now, I've picked uh, the stories that I'd like to talk about. So, <coughs> so, cracking on. Yesterday, the internal market power grab was back on the cards. In specific, in relationship to the... Scrapping of Public Health England and the not-so-secretive plans to privatise the English NHS. The new Institute for Health is to be established and up and running in England next month. Right? The new body is to be run by Tory Peer, Dido A. Harding, failed talk-talk executive 
and failed English centralised test and trade boss. All right. So she was the person at the top of test and trade and uh, test and trace in England, and as we all know, it pretty much doesn't work. All right. Also, interestingly, uh, her husband is Tory MP and former minister uh, John Penrose, right, who is a co-founder of the right wing think tank. The 1828. What is it with numbers with this bloody Tory party? Uh, but they seem to have something for last for the 18th century. Go back to, and uh, anyway, um, he's a he's a, a co-founder of the 1828 a advisory a think tank. A, it's called the 1828 advisory board, right? The 1828 advisory board have written ex extensively on privatising the NHS. Um, in favour of the failed American Medicare health system, right? The English NHS, or what's left of it, is to be prepared for um, for an invasion of American healthcare companies in a post-Brexit page, a, a trade deal. Um, and this is where the internal market powers come into play here, right? Because what's, what happens here with the eternal market is whatever standards the, the company in England were expected to be replicated right across the UK so the scrap of public health Scotland could be on the cards and the packaging up of, public, uh, uh, of uh, the Scottish NHS for sale to, or to open it up to um, uh, market forces, especially American healthcare companies, this would all be in, you know, in line with the internal market uh, um, standards, where the whole of the UK has to do the same as what England does, is the biggest part, because the quangle that will be set up to oversee all this will be set up in Westminster, and the English have a majority in Westminster, all right? Um, once again, the internal market and the, and, the, and the internal market white paper and how they propose to structure the internal market could be very damaging here in Scotland, and we could well see an end to NHS Scotland because of this, all right? Also, yesterday, um, the the A-levels debacle was back in the, the news. Now, absentee Prime Minister Boris Johnston had a go as an education secretary for his feelings um, with the A-levels, a in England and the exam results in England. Now, it's a unbelievable that Boris Johnson, which called the ap absent Prime Minister, would have the nerve to have a go at one of his own ministers who are at least showing up for the job each day. Now, it's believed that Boris Johnson, in the middle of the A-level debacle and a, the COVID-19 debacle down there, is a, on holiday again. Speculation about Johnson's future is rife, but we'll get to that a wee bit further down, all right? Uh, back here in Scotland yesterday, there was a lot going on. Now, the Glasgow to Edinburgh uh, rail line is to close for a month due to flood damaging, right? This is going to cause major congestion on the M8 corridor, which is the main uh, the main route through, Scot uh, through central Scotland, because people are not getting onto buses and onto public transport in large numbers because of COVID-19, which means that Pardon me, everybody will be taken to their cars. The M8 motorways are about to become a car park, right? Also, yesterday, the decision to close Bannockburn Heritage Centre has been overturned. It's been overturned, thankfully, due to a rescue package bought by the Scottish Government. Now, the thing about the Bannockburn Heritage Centre, it's not just historical, it's also cultural. You know, um, it's a cultural as well, you know, it, it, Bannockburn is, is huge, it was a huge milestone in Scottish history, so well done to the Scottish Government for bailing it out and uh, the people there get to keep their, jo their jobs, alright. Morning John, you haven't missed much so far mate. Right, yesterday, Jane Freeman took questions in the Scottish Parliament, uh, on the moving of a folk from hospital to care homes. Opposition parties went went after the Scottish Government 
over the situation. Right, the health minister slaughtered all accusers for the opposition party in a rowdy session of the parliament. Ms Freeman pointed out that moving people from hospital to care homes is a clinical decision. It was a decision to be made by medical staff. It wasn't a decision to be made by government ministers. Government ministers sent out the, the, the instructions to say, look, if anybody can be moved, let's move them. Clear the bed blocking, as the opposition parties wanted them to do, and get ready um, for the COVID influx into hospitals. Right. Now, to emphasise the point that these were uh, uh, clinical and clinician-led decisions, she has told the health boards to publicise the numbers in each health board that was moved from hospitals to um, care homes and to publish any information they had on patients that were COVID-19 when they were moved. All right. So, as I say, Jean Freeman was broken. None of their nonsense yesterday. She made it quite clear that the decision to move people was done on a clinical basis and uh, the decision was made by doctors. Right? No government. The government just asked them if they could move people into a uh, of hospital, um, whether that had been into um, care packages at home or into care homes to block, uh, to end, uh, to clear the bed blocking and allow for the influx of COVID patients that happened. They arrived at the end of March, right through to the end of April when things started to settle down a wee bit. All right. Also, yesterday, the inquiry into the handling of the Alex Salmon case um, started, right? First to give evidence was Leslie Evans. Now, Evans is the UK top civil servant in Scotland. Um, when she took to her chair, believe it or not, Miss Evans laid down the scope of questions that she was willing to answer. And it was to be, the, the questions were to be kept within the narrow boundaries um, set by the inquiry, right? So Evans was asked directly if the new complaints procedure was designed to go after Alex Salmon. She said no. Right, let's have a wee bit of background into this before I carry on with this, right? Right, so eh, the new complaints procedures, they were being drawn up in the height of the Me Too movement, right? And the eh, and it was being done simultaneously as a, an inquiry in Westminster at the time. Now, the head civil servant down there, Sir Mark, Sir Mark Sedgwick, um, well, Sedgwell, sorry, um, advised the Scottish uh, branch of the civil service, because remember, it's the British civil service in Scotland. It's not the Scottish civil service. Anyway, he advised the Leslie Evans it might be a good idea that ministers up here authorise a similar inquiry into how HR handles a alleged offences and, of course, historic offences. All right. So the idea a, was a, apparently nothing to do with getting Alex Salmon at all. Now, remember, Boris Johnson at the time said that a, the inquiry down in Westminster was spaffing 40 million quid up the wall. But in the height of the Me Too movement, it was decided that people had that these things should be reviewed. Right? So Leslie Evans denies categorically that uh, the changes were after the first the last first minister, Alex Salmond, all right. Also yesterday. Um but wait a minute. Now the UK the UK I mean goodbye to Leslie Evans uh, uh, evidence, right? She was also asked uh, questions repeatedly which were outside the scope of the inquiry. So uh, the committee chair uh, um, had to step in a few times, especially in, in response to Jackie Bailey, and say, hey, Miss Evans is only here to ask, answer questions within the scopes of the minute and, and other uh, civil servants, which will be called, will only be answering questions within the ministerial scope of the inquiry. You know, they'll know their own trial, in other words. But to be fair to Miss Evans, as a, a, she apologised to the committee for the failings in the procedure. We'll get a wee bit more to that later, all right? 
Also yesterday, the fallout for the BBC hatchet job and Alex Salmon's trial and, the, and Alex Salmon's character he was pretty strong condemnation of the BBC. I've now seen the programme. It was sent to me by Stephen Ward and thanks, mate. Hatchet job with a platform given to the alphabet uh, women, but no platform given to um, the defence witnesses who destroyed the stories of the alphabet women in day eight and day nine of the Alex Salmon trial. Funny enough, that programme now that I've watched it, it jumped for day seven at the end of the alphabet women's evidence to day ten. No, we are in that documentary where the defence witnesses found and brought forward to explain how it was that they destroyed the alphabet women's uh, evidence. And what's really interesting about that and all is, and note to everyone out there, see if these women were meant to be anonymous. How did the BBC manage to interview all bloody nine of them? Eh? Now these women were given a platform and they were also given the last word, by the way. Now it was trial by a uh, television and the, uh, as I say, it's, a, it's, it's real serious stuff. Apart from the hatchet job they did in Alex Salmon, you know, they're trying to uh, emphasise splits in the SNP. Now listen, I don't really care too much about the internal fighting in the SNP. What I care about is the same as the rest of us, and that's the end goal. Right? Now whether we like this or no, the SNP, uh, in its current form, is the vehicle that's going to get us over the line, and we are that far from the line. We are so close, you can taste it. And we have to just, you know, hold our nose and uh, tick that SMP box because we need an SMP majority next year. And the thing about that is, senior Tories are now beginning to make it quite clear it would be untenable if the SMP score a majority in the Holyrood Parliament elections next year to prevent a further SA, a further independence referendum. Now, folks, the fallout of this could very much fracture the Yes movement. Now, I'm voicing to the Yes movement, the wider movement, because there are many different uh, fractures. Get a grip. The end game is here, and these buggers are going to go hell for leather to prevent the end game from happening. So, you know, no matter what side you're on, the Assam side or uh, the Sturgeon side, by the way, we haven't heard either of their stories yet. Right? That's yet to come. We still have to hold our nose and vote SNP. And I can bet your boots Alex would say the same bloody thing. Right? We are so bloody close that it's unbelievable. Right? Now, Mark Hurst, who's been charged uh, by the, the Crown Office for his reporting on the Alex Salmon case, he has written to the Crown Office and his lawyers have written to the Crown Office over that a hatchet job that was done the other night, right? Now, it's been rumoured that the Crown Office is looking into Kirsty Walk and her production company for that hatchet job that was done last night. But people, get this into your heads. Whether you want it now or you want it yesterday, you want it tomorrow or you want it yesterday, I'll tell you this. The First Minister's strategy is working. When she came to power as First Minister in 2015, or 2014, end of 2014, we were sitting at 45%. The First Minister's handling of the Scottish Government and the handling of the COVID and the steady steering of the ship has seen support for independence rise from 45% to 55 percent the new factor in the 16 and 17 year olds in the in the Europeans European citizens and we're almost at that 60 percent that Nicola Sturgeon wants to fire that gun to ensure that she wins the next referendum but more importantly folks according to the manifesto there has to be a change in circumstances that change of circumstances eh, happens on the 31st of December right when we're 
But it doesn't matter which side of this fight you, you, that you're on are going to get into. Right? It's important that we all stick. We were, I, we were, we all stay. We focus on the goal. We are so bloody close that uh, I can taste it. I've worked most of my adult life for this. And I'm not going to see a tit for tat between first ministers. Put a bloody end to this. Right? So, doesn't matter which side of this fence you're on. And I don't believe for a minute that Alex Salmon, a man who has spent his whole life fighting for this cause, is going to derail this cause. So remember, folks, we are close. Yeah, there's been some shenanigans going on here. But keep your eye on the goal. All right? And the goal, people, is bigger than any individual. And I mean that. Okay. So as I say, there's many different views on what independence will look like. There's many different views on what's been happening in the SNP. But it doesn't matter. Hold your nose and tick the SNP box. We need an SNP majority in that next parliament because Westminster will find it unattainable to actually stop the next referendum. It just won't be done. They can claim if it's two different independent parties that the SNP have no majority, but if it's one independence party and it's the SNP, the vehicle that's been driving this shenanigans all my life, then we will have our second referendum. And as I say, we European citizens and 16 and 17 year olds thrown into the pot and the amount of people that have died there in it the last six years, sorry to say this, it's a bit crass, who were probably all no voters. Um, the tide shifted and it's not going back. Right? So whatever the fight is internally in the party, and I'll have my bloody say on it when the time comes, because after all, I'm a party member but I'll be doing it through the official channels and I won't be doing it in the papers or anywhere bloody else. But we have to keep the SNP on track for that majority, folks, all right? Right, eh, moving on to this morning, right? Um, right, minute, a minute, si Scott Rail is asking passengers... It's already passed, but Scott, we were asking passengers at four, uh, 9.43 this morning to hold a minute silence in remembrance of those who passed away in the train derailment last week, all right? Um, new exam result certificates to be issued on the 7th of September. Top civil servant apologises and the salmon inquiry for procedural failures. So that's what I said when I come back to this. Uh, Leslie Evans isn't apologising for any shenanigans or underhanded stuff that went on for the UK civil service in Scotland or any other party that might have been involved in this. Right? She was only apologising for procedural failures on writing up a new set of uh, uh, HR proceedings. Because that's what they are. There's no legislation. They're HR proceedings that were badly put together. That's what Leslie Evans was apologising for. All right. The Times this morning, well, most of the papers doing there this morning went on a um, the new a integrated health system that they're going to create doing there in England, right? But the Times, the Met, the Met Police to drop probe into Alex Salmon as the person making the claims in Westminster fears for her life. Bollocks, of course. What they did was they found a stooge doing that road who said that Alex Salmon had behaved inappropriately towards her and all, and they, the Met Office was picking it up, right? And they were going to investigate it. But after which went on up this road, I as a big iPad the thanks. After what went on up this road, the Met have decided, nah, this woman's no credible. So the, the Times has run the story saying she feared for her life. Why would she fear for her life? She's in bloody London. She knows if she stays here in Scotland. Well, at least I don't think she stays here in Scotland. Right. Right, the Met Office. This is quite important, folks. Because of the damage that was done last week with heavy rain, um, the Met Office has issued another warning for extremely heavy rain over the next couple of days, which could lead to chaos here in Scotland. The land's still soaking. We haven't had enough time for the land to dry out. 
and there could be massive landslides, railway tracks shifting, bridges shifting, depending on how bad this gets, because the land's already saturated. Right? And the star, well, the star down there this morning, and up here's running on um, Bojo, uh, the, the invisible Prime Minister. You know, they're asking, where's Bojo? It's a bit like, where, where's Wally? I say Bojo does a runner. But as I say, that goes back to speculation on Bojo's future. Because um, the online editions yesterday were all running speculation pieces on whether Bojo would make it past a Brexit, a, or whether Bojo would survive past Brexit. He's only in place to get Brexit done, and after that, it's uh, believed that he'll get a, he'll, he'll head for the hills with whatever money him and his team and West and the Westminster cabinet at this moment have managed to steal. And as we know, it runs into billions. All right. Also, this morning, it's reported that four pupils, uh, school pupils around Scotland have tested positive for COVID. A couple of them in Coat Bridge, um, and the, I think there's one in Glasgow, one in Inverness. There's also a teacher in Inverness which has tested positive, all right, for COVID. Right, today at lunchtime, as well as getting the national records for Scotland's update on community deaths, um, we will also get a review of the Aberdeen lockdown. Now, if you've been watching the figures uh, for uh, cases that, um, uh, that have arose in Aberdeen, I don't know whether she'll lift that lockdown. It might go for another seven days. All right. And finally, I'll be um, appearing after 12 on a radio station at Caldon Media. Um, I'm going to sit down with Inori and have a chat with him on whatever. You know, so you're welcome to join in or you're welcome to listen in, you'll find a link on my Facebook page to Caledon, uh, Caledon Media, all right? And that'll take you to the, the radio station. Um, it's an online radio station. And you can uh, also download the mobile apps for Android and iPhone there, if you're out and about, okay? Now, as I say, folks, I'm going to go back to this uh, again because this is really important, right? Since uh, since Nicola Sturgeon came to power, think over what you may. Support for independence has steadily risen. It's went from 45% to 54% and is still rising. Now, whatever this debacle, whatever comes out of this debacle, and uh, uh, which people believe was the Alex Salmon stitch-up, which we all believe was a stitch-up of Alex Salmon, we still have to keep the movement tight together and we all have to um, vote SNP to get them a majority in Holyrood next year. No matter what else is going on, we can sort this crap afterwards, after the event. But if the SNP fracture in 40 bits, then the independence movement has gone down the tubes for a generation. So... Remember, folks, you know, we all have different views on what independence should look like. We all have different views on what happened with Alex Salmon, right? But remember, folks, keep your eye on the ball. The end game is nigh. In fact, it's speculated that the SNP manifesto will state that if they get a majority, then the referendum will be next September. Um, Lorraine Sinclair, one of the viewers, had put that up yesterday, but uh, for some reason, the content isn't... I, I shared it, but the content's not available anymore. Right? But remember, folks, I own the ball. Right? I know that you as viewers out there um, understand that. Right? Pick your differences to one side. And to undecided and no voters, you know, who are watching this as well, you know... What's going on in the SNP is no is no that important. The management of the company, the country is what's important to you guys out there, the soft no voters and uh, the undecided. And to be fair to Nicola Sturgeon, her uh, handling of the uh, um, of, of of the devolution brief since she came to power has been exemplary, and the handling of the COVID nineteen situation has been exemplary. The work that the SNP have done 
within the constraints of devolution have been absolutely phenomenal and the things that have been achieved on behalf of the people of Scotland have been absolutely phenomenal. We'll have a wee quick run down, will we? Eh? Nay bridge tolls. Bus passage for the 60 year olds and over. Right? Nay bedroom tax. Free, properly free tuition fees because under Labour and the Lib Dem, if you remember right, uh, rightly, there was a backdoor payment called the graduates tax or the graduates payment. So, you know, um, infrastructure updates like you've never seen before, not a penny of it came through Westminster folks. It all came out the Scottish Block Grant as they like to call it, or as I like to call it, half were in money back well, they keep half it. Right? These are all facts. Right? Under this SNP government, life in Scotland is absolutely a hundred times better than what it is in other parts of the UK. In fact, the wee drunk Lord George Folkes eh, um, summed it up perfectly, the Labour peer. He said, <laughs> and I quote, eh, the SNP are making se public services in Scotland manifestly better than in the uh, rest of the United Kingdom. And of course, the radio presenter said to him, is that a bad thing? And the wee drunk said, no, but they're doing it deliberately. <laughs> so remember, life in Scotland is better but it could be much better under independence. So let's not allow the faction of this movement or a tiff or our spat within the SNP. We the members are what's important and uh, we the members' goals are what's important. And the wider yes uh, movement and the wider yes juggernaut is unbloody stoppable at this time. The only thing that could stop it at this time is us. And I implore you not to. Right? Right, so that's it, that's it. Rant over. Um, the wee dragon's getting ready to go to your work. Um, but we'll have a wee look at what you've got to say. Yes, Nicola did say she's looking forward to having her say, um, Paul. That's right, David, we can't allow division to destroy the progress that the indie movement has made. Deal with a follow after the referendum. I can't agree with that anymore. Then, uh, you know, that's absolutely correct. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Sandra. Nice to see you all there. Nice to see the, the live viewership is quite high as well. Um, aye, I know. <laughs> that's the usual. That's a big iPad, Davey. Aye, I know. Um, that's a bit slow in the moving. Jim, you think she'll, she'll uh, extend the Aberdeen lockdown, do you? Well, looking at the figures, I would say she would be right, mate. There's even a chance that Cooper Angus is going to get into lockdown and all. So, mind your language, Timothy. Bill's, eh, uh, Sarah, Bill's waving to you. There. There. <laughs> Hi, honey, how are you? Yeah. Guys, a dragon went live. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> <coughs> now, Colin, unionism in Scotland isn't a big problem. It really isn't. Now, I always, and I'm going to do this again, I always make a clear distinction between no voters and unionists. Right? No voters voted not on economic concerns. Well, the economy's no problem anyway. We're going to go to the cliff edge. The UK economy's going down the tubes. We either go away or we rebuild. So, the economic arguments are not there anymore. Currency arguments are not there either because it's not really a new currency we need. It's a central bloody bank. I've been through this and I'm maybe doing a special on it. All right, I'm maybe doing an evening special on it. All right, on how, in fact, I've done a wee bit on how currency zones and currency union works. All right. Aye, I know, sweetheart, I'll be there in a minute. Um, all right. It was nice to see Sarah visit, Dory. Oh, that's nice. Um, so, you know, I mean, all in 2014 and all the arguments that were there in 2014 have been demolished. As I say, the only people that can prevent independence now is us, the Scottish people. Us and the juggernaut that is the Yes movement. Because there's only us who can put the brakes on it and have the load shift in the trailer. Think of this as an all-under-one banner march, as, as Roddy said, um, you know, um, the barhead boy. You know, it's unbloody, unbloody stoppable once it sets off. You know, and this has already started. We're on the route. 
It's unbloody stoppable now, and the only thing that could stop it is the people in it leaving it. Stick to our guns. Stick to supporting the SNP, no matter what's going on internally at the top level. Let's get them a majority, because it's going to be in the manifesto that there will be that referendum. And hey, I can assure you, the party members are stunning their bloody heads. Now, Nicola was a gradualist and is a gradualist, but guess what? Gradualism has already passed. Um, September 2000, uh, 2021 will be seven years since the last referendum, and under the Good Friday Agreement, that is a political generation. Or the legal requirements met, all right, even under UK law, because we're all signatories of the Good Friday Agreement, and it's all agreed that, uh, uh, that a political generation is seven years. Scotland moved the goalposts by reducing the voting age to 16, and of course the Good Friday Agreement had to be altered to uh, contend with that, because let's face it, there's every chance that Northern Ireland and Wales will follow on that same track. All right. Now, I've got to take my wee dragon to work, folks. Um, so, it's Andy Tuck Davy out the truck and in his office, as I have been for the last few days and might be for the next wee while, until I resolve a few things. Um, but thanks for continuing your viewership. And as I say, I'm on Cal Caledon a, a Media uh, between 12 and 1, or 12 and 2 of the day, OK? So, if you want to listen in. So, usual stuff. Don't forget... Facts. Face coverings in public areas, right? Avoid large gatherings. Clean surfaces and hands regularly. And if you have symptoms, book a test. There's plenty of testing capability here. And there's no hardship in going for a test. When Sarah went for her test, she had the results back in three hours. Okay. Now, stay safe. And I'll speak to you all tomorrow. <laughs>